Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that many of you asked me before. You were asking what we can do if we want to change something in our CAE model uh, in, in a loop or in a script. Basically, you have an existing CAE model and you want to change something in it. You don't want to build it from the very scratch or you don't have even the, uh, the Python file or the journal file to create it from the very scratch and you need to change something very, very small and um, insignificant compared to the whole model in your CAE model and change the uh, and, and run the job based on that. For example, you have a complex model and you want to change the pressure at one point or you want to change the mesh of one part or you want to um, do something similar. So now I'm going to create a bulge test which was a tiny part of my PhD and I want to create a bulge simulation and then adjust something in it. It's not the uh, best bulge simulation but it, it uh, does the job. Now I have my simulation variable file. This file was created by MATLAB based on some other input that I had in my MATLAB and it has some useful information that is going to be read through this uh, bulge creation um, Python file. For example, I have a total time, 260 seconds. I have the maximum pressure of the bulge. I have this bulge history pulse history and I have the elastic modulus of my material, position ratio and other constants of my material. I'm going to paste this into my abacus script and now I will have all this information here. In my bulge file, in my bulge python file basically, I have the um, model so that I'm going to have a sheet, I'm going to have a die, I'm going to have an interaction between them, it's going to create the assembly, it's going to mesh the files and it's going to create the job. And I'm going to copy the whole thing and up to here and then you can save the file, run the job and etc. I just commented those lines, it wasn't really needed for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm going to copy everything and I'm going to run it. So what it does is it's going to um, we're going to go over it. It's going to create the um, all the components for this CAE model and imagine that this is the CAE model that you have and you don't have this Python file. The few lines after this is the one that you need to learn from this tutorial. So now I have a model one, I have a part. Let's go to the part. Um, so I have a sheet, I have a die, and there is a property. I'm using Abacus built-in Johnson Cook function here with density, elastic properties, and plastic properties. This material is aluminium alloy. Aluminium alloys, many of them, has negative rate sensitivity. So the um, Johnson Cook C value is not defined here or it's set as zero and you can see that the um, material properties or the materials assigned to this sheet we have the assembly and it's meshed so oh okay so let's take a look at the parts uh, in the step you can see that we're using dynamic explicit model 260 seconds for the convenience uh, of speeding up the whole process, I have a scale factor, I have a mass scaling. We can, adjust, we can check that the mass scaling is not too much. I believe it was okay. And we have an interaction. We have a default interaction and friction between the die and sheet. Probably you don't need the, this default interaction. We mainly need this die sheet interaction. We have loads that is the maximum pressure. You saw that it was around eight, a little bit above eight. And we have a pulse history. This pulse history is identical to these numbers. And you can see that start from zero time, 0 0.0115 up to this amount of seconds, that's 255 seconds up to one. And at one, we are going to have this maximum pressure. So these second columns is going to be multiplied by this eight point something. And the first column is just a second. 
So that's the pulse history and we have tr uh, a few boundary conditions. First of all, the die is fixed. The sheet edge, this edge, is going to be fixed. It's in caster to prevent the sheet drawing into the die. And we have two boundary conditions as a result of these two symmetrical conditions we assumed. Then we have our mesh. Both of these are meshed. And you can see that the size of the mesh, yep, the size of the mesh in this situation is one, right? So Imagine that this is a uh, one millimeter. Imagine that this is the mesh number one study that you want to do, and you want to change the mesh size to two, three, four, and five inside this model. And you can see that the job is created. It's not run, but the job is created based on this model one. Now, we want to change this model to something else. We want to preserve this thing, uh, don't override it, but we want to create another model based on this. How can we do that? We can go to model, copy model, and copy this model, give it another name, and then modify that model um, by changing the mesh size. But how can we do that automatically and in a loop? That will be way convenient, more convenient and faster. So I'm going to show you this. If I want to change the mesh size, First of all, I'm a little bit conservative. I prefer to save what I created right now into another model. For example, I'm going to copy this model, rename this model one as a base model, or you can even copy it. So if I click on this, my name is going to be changed. Now I have the base model and there is nothing else here. Here, I'm going to copy base model to a model named mesh2. Let's do that. So now I have a mesh two norm model and I can, I can go back between these two. I can move between these two. And in mesh two, if you take a look at it right now, I have these and my, my sheet material mesh size is this. Now I want to delete the mesh, uh, delete the seeds, seed part again by size two, recreate the mesh, regenerate, create another job with name mesh2 to the model mesh2 on the for the model mesh2. So let's do that. If I copy all these, it's going to do as all the things that I just mentioned. So now if you click on this, you'll see that the approximate global size is going to be two. Now how can I do this in a loop? I can do this in a loop, but before that let's talk about something else. Imagine that you want to create a maximum pressure uh, study. Imagine that you want to see the effect of maximum pressure on something in your model. Imagine that you're working on a statistical, uh, statistical uh, situation and you want to know what's the maximum stress on one specific part of your material. You don't change the mesh. You, ju you just change the maximum load. You can do this with this. So here I have a max P2 model created as a copy of this made base model. And then that mod in that model, I'm going to change the magnitude of that pressure on sheet from eight something to 10, regenerate it, and then I'm going to have another job created for this. So let's do that. So if I take a look at it now, I have basically max 2 and also max p2 and also mesh 2 and if i go to the jobs i can see that i have three jobs the first one was the basic one that we created the second one was this mesh 2 on model 2 uh, on, mo on model mesh 2 and also this max p2 on model max p2 and in model max p2 if i go to load model max p2 if I click on this, you'll see that the maximum load, uh, maximum pressure was set to 10 here. So this 10 is going to be multiplied by that pulse history that we told. So how can we create a kind of loop here? Here, I drafted everything we need already to save some time. We need to have a list of names. Let's say that we have, we need to have a list called mesh3, mesh4, mesh5, you can name it as you wish. Probably it's better to avoid any dots or something. Um, so I'm going to call it mesh3 
uh, mesh 4, mesh 5, and these are corresponding to uh, mesh sizes of 3, mesh sizes of 4, mesh sizes of 5 millimeter. And I need to have a counter thing here. I believe there might be some other base, but this is the way that I am doing it. So I have an I that starts from 0. Then I'm going to say that for I name, uh, this is just the temporary name that is going to be changed inside the loop uh, within names. So I name can be mesh 3, mesh 4, mesh 5. I need, I'm basically copied everything that I had here, change the name mesh2 to this name I name, right? And then I change the size that was, uh, what, one at one situation at, at the very base of the um, file, and then it was two for mesh2, and now I have mesh size of I. And this I at the beginning, it's zero, that is corresponding to number three here, and then when i is changed to, to 1, I'm going to have 4. When i at the end of the loop is going to be changed to 2, I will have 5. So let's run this and see what will happen. In Python, the counter starts at 0 as far as I can remember. That's why I needed to have the i started at 0. And then you'll see that we have mesh 3, mesh 4, mesh 5. So let's go to mesh and see what happened. So this is the mesh 2. This is mesh 3. You'll see that it's increased the size of it, mesh 4, mesh 5. If you need to measure something at one specific location, when you change the mesh, you probably need to have a mesh number. So in your output, Put file, you'll need to know what exactly Abacus assigned as the mesh number for this thing so that you can export all your values for that specific number. You can do the same methodology that we discussed, but in the output file, in the exporting information, um, when the job was done, then you need to have these names. So what I do is that I usually run all these files uh, for, for a few seconds, then I stop them. Um, record what is the exact number of the element that I need those information from, create another loop for those elements, and then export all those information that I want, for example, I don't know, the load or stress or something from those elements, uh, again in a loop, so that it's more convenient. That was the whole thing I want to talk about in this tutorial. Um, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions that I can help you, I will try my best to help you in a short time. Um, but um, if you see that I don't respond to your email really fast, don't be discouraged. I'm probably very busy with other things. Thank you so much and have a good one. Bye-bye.